What's going on there guys? Good afternoon. It is the Earth Master here with Missy Mimi's. How's it going guys? On this uh, December 5th, 2021 date, uh, about 1.18 California time PM of course. Latest quake, a 2.5 earthquake out in the Pacific Ocean on the big island of Hawaii. Let's go ahead and chat about what's going on out there in the Gulf of California region where we're seeing a uh, Seen a little bit of swarm of activity over the last few days here, specifically over the last week in the Gulf of California. Let's go ahead and drop this down and check out the activity that's kind of occurring out here along a uh, sectional part of the transform fault, this little section down here. There are, there are a couple spreading centers uh, within this region here, very small sections that kind of spread uh, compared to the uh, transform fault, which kind of uh, go against each other, if you will. And that's kind of where it's occurring looking like about 11 earthquakes or so within the last week and i'm sure there's some uh, more more of them but just not um, over the 4.0 threshold usgs only indicating the 4.0 and above with, within this region but we've seen quite a bit and definitely definitely within the last day or so uh, some increased movement in there without a main shake Without a main quake down there so it's an area of interest as this thing spreads up uh, mainly predominantly a transform fault system <clears throat> see if i can catch my voice here i'm still a little bit uh, under the weather but uh we'll see a transform fault as it heads up north to the uh, imperial fault system and of course into the uh, san andreas fault system so a little bit of swarming activity here we're watching as well i wish i could see all the microquake activity that's occurring on that specific fault section uh, south of the border, but of course USGS not really covering that um, activity. I may look into uh, other agencies to see if we can find out uh, how intense the uh, swarming may be down here. But it's definitely an area to watch. We haven't seen any significant movement since, let's go ahead and show you guys, I pulled up a little map here of uh, 6.0 earthquake activity within this region. This is the area where we're seeing the swarming activity strike over the last week. Same area, same section of the transform type fault, spreading centers kind of down here and up here in this region, small sections of it uh, kind of spreading. But like I said, transform faults are working their way up north. We have seen a couple 6.0s, but it's been a while since we've seen uh, some significant movement down there. Looks like 6.1 back in 1963 was the last uh, earthquake of that size and uh, a couple other ones prior to that as well 1961 and 1953 for that area uh, so earthquakes can get a little bit larger than what we're seeing right now and it's very possible to see a uh, potentially 6.0 earthquake activity within this region uh, all we've been seeing so far is a bunch of fours kick up i don't think we've seen uh I don't think we've seen anything above that in this region here. Mostly uh, looks like mid to upper fours kicking off. We can go even the last 30 days of activity. You can see um, a lot of fours kick up, folks, quite a bit. Uh, upper four, 4.9 there, but no main shake. You know, it's just kind of odd. Nothing above 5.0, but the likelihood of seeing something pick up uh, and be larger in this area is increasing as we continue to see earthquake activity uh, almost daily within this region so just uh, be on guard also up here in the south or in the north around the Salton Sea area getting some further movement kick up and around the Salton Sea area and northward on the North American plate a couple small microquakes kicking up here around North Shore uh, let's see what do we got up here way up here 27 kilometers northeast of north shore 1.6 kicking off uh, and of course that swarming activity down here on the brawley seismic zone and the imperial fault system all showing uh, some earthquake activity over the last 24 hours riverside northward looking like uh, some activity as well just microquakes they did have a 2.7 though kick up in that region of the state and also Ridgecrest showing a little bit of movement. Not a whole lot, just a small handful of quakes, but some activity ramping up within the last hour uh, with a 1.5 and some movement northward uh, around the Coso 
volcanic range as well. If you look down here though, if you look generally overall, you look like pretty much uh, the Garlock fault structure northward, things kind of calm. Not completely calm, there's definitely some movement throughout Nevada, but not as intense as we would normally see uh, along the west coast. Uh, most of it's confined, it seems like, uh, this section southward through the Gulf of California. Uh, so that's uh, definitely something to watch in that region of the state. A little bit of movement around the Cascadia, just off the west part of the locked area. The Cascadia Megathrust 2.9 occurring overnight. Um, 4.8 kilometers for that earthquake. Tremor activity has kind of ramped up a little bit uh, compared to the past couple weeks. This here is last night's activity. Some movement uh, around the southern Oregon, northern California end, uh, the southern end of the Cascadia. All showing a little bit of activity in the tremor department, but uh, nothing significant as far as tremor goes at the moment, but we are seeing some activity uh, there at the surface. A swarm of movement up here to the north as well around Mount Rainier or just outside the park. Uh, and a little bit of activity up here to the north as well. Some shallow earthquakes uh, kicking off and some quarry blasts up north into the Canada area. The northern end of the Cascadia remains quiet as well. I did check that movement um, just a few minutes ago and I still don't see any new activity ramping up here at the northern end um, of the uh, Cascadia which would be up here in this section looks pretty quiet so um, just kind of kind of watching things as we're uh, as we go from day to day folks a lot of activity over here around the southwestern part of the Pacific Ring of Fire as well through the Indonesia region with the 5.0 uh, and a 6.0, this was from yesterday, of course, uh, near the Indonesia area. This one pretty deep, 174 kilometers. That one struck, uh, what was it, late afternoon, I believe? Uh, yes, late afternoon. I was checking that. But uh, deep earthquake activity nonetheless within this region and Papua New Guinea. Yeah, that, a lot of deep movement lately as far as on the larger scale. Around everywhere. Japan pretty quiet a couple earthquakes scattered throughout the area looks like this was uh, overnight and just a short time ago um, within that region of the Japan trench some deeper activity here just to the north working its way north on the northern end of, end of the uh, Japan trench so this this area right here is still a pretty pretty good hot spot of uh, potential when it comes to producing a larger earthquake. I'm not talking about a 6.0, I'm talking something much larger. Uh, so still keeping an eye on this region. What do we got up here? Just talking about Canada and we get a, uh, or Washington, and we get a, a little bit larger earthquake happening up there. 3.6 just coming in into the Winthrop. Yeah, Winthrop. Winthrop, Washington area. Pretty shallow earthquake, negative 1.1 indicated that this is uh well obviously up in the mountain ranges here wow. see if it's been reviewed it's automatic status still but uh yeah that just coming through 3.6 into the northern washington region kind of where all this swarming of microquake activity is kicking up it's kind of odd that it just came in as we're speaking yeah look at the look at the timestamp 21 21 Woo uh 21 lucky numbers i think the Intermountain West region is relatively quiet throughout uh, Idaho. Not a whole lot going on. Did see that 3.3, but this is the all microquake, uh, or at least the all magnitude map here, and we're not seeing a whole lot of movement in this region throughout Idaho where it's been awfully quiet. And uh, the Yellowstone area pretty quiet as well. Utah swarming has disappeared. Um, Pecos, Texas region has pretty much diminished as well when it comes to earthquake activity some microquakes around the Oklahoma region areas east quiet as well the New Madrid zone pretty quiet uh, 2.3 looks like uh, earlier in the Laurel Park North Carolina region pretty shallow earthquake activity this region has seen some uh, movement within the last 30 days uh, but that was much further to the northeast around High Point region uh, let's see what else we got here 
far as uh, Puerto Rico, southward, pretty quiet. There's activity along the Middle America Trench. South America, they had this little earthquake activity earlier this morning, 4.4 into the Peru Chile Trench. And it looks like um, shortly thereafterwards, a uh, 5.1 in the West Chile Rise. South Sandwich Islands had a little 5.7. That was yesterday, I believe, right? Mm, today. That was today? This morning? Yep. Oh, yeah. I guess it was 15, 15, 18. So a few hours ago. Let's see here. Big Island showing some activity kind of stretching out towards the uh, Loihi Seamount. We just checked this, too, and now there's movement near Mauna Loa. That was not there. Just kicking know. up a couple minutes ago, yeah. twenty-one seventeen. So, probably about the time we hit the uh, record button here yeah. on the uh, stream, kicking up around the Mono Loa. It's kind of weird, right? Get a little earthquake there in Hawaii, and then we get some uh, adjustment and movement over here on this section of the North American plate. It's all connected, believe it or not, folks. It's a huge planet to us little ants on the on the surface, running around doing our little cat and mouse games. But <laughs> uh, these little plates, these I should say, these large plates in general. Uh, can affect one another significantly just by any any type of movement any any uh, even a microquake could adjust uh, a section of the plate thousands of miles away and inland nonetheless uh, but i will be uh, checking back here on the 3.6 that struck in washington I'm kind of curious to see if that gets updated or or uh, whatnot from the usgs looking at the us the uh, seismograph stations there was there is a signature, I should say, showing up on the British Columbia station here, kind of around the, uh, uh, well, north of uh, Washington, but it is picking up that, what well, was, now just disappeared as soon as I start talking about it. What in the world's going on? There, there we go. That's going to be the earthquake that struck up there around the, the uh, uh, Washington region showing up there on that uh, Port Alberni station. Looks kind of kind of like, like a, a double earthquake. Yeah, it looks there. like a maybe possibly a double tap type earthquake so is that one at petroleum that's a little maybe spike picking, picking it up no no that's, that's because localized. it's localized definitely localized mm. earthquake nothing coming in so far there though no it's just it's so tiny and so small i mean it's it's that's a little tiny thin line if this yeah. was a larger earthquake it, it would, would definitely flatten it it would flatten it way more than what it's doing. <laughs> it's just very localized, but probably won't even be picked up by the USGS. Yeah. But uh, what else we got here? Alaska, some movement up here to the north. That was uh, that was definitely late last night with that time, 010121. A lot of ones. I know. A lot of ones in there today and yesterday. Hmm. Areas over here have Very gone quiet. pretty quiet. You see the window on the uh, OBS software program? Mm -hmm. See how it's kind of picking that up? And I'm not for sure why. I'll have to check in the video, see if that's uh, being picked up or not, being recorded. Kind of bugging me a little bit. <laughs> but uh, anyway, folks, yeah, let's check the Yellowstone map here real quick, see what's going on. Not a whole lot of activity. There was definitely some earthquake activity here in the northwest corner. I think I chatted about that last night. USGS has not um, put up anything. Well, maybe they did. Let's see. That may have been the 3.3 uh, .3 that struck at 0135 last night. We go over here and look. 0135. So there it is. That was the earthquake activity that kicked up there in Idaho, showing up on the seismograph station. Other than that, there's not any activity at all to report in Yellowstone National Park um, whatsoever. Trimmer map will be updated a little bit later this evening, but uh, things could be getting a little shaky out here with some further movement along the North American plate. And of course, watching this area down here in the Gulf of California pretty closely. Like I said, it's been a while since we've seen a 6.0 magnitude earthquake. They have seen a swarm of movement along this area of the uh, transform fault down there in the Gulf of California. These little spreading sections here. Looks like there's a couple possibly around this region. But uh, USGS showing 10 kilometers for all of these earthquakes at least in the Gulf of California range. 
Well, there's that little earthquake we we're talking about in the uh, Petrolia station. It's kind of a just a little bitty spike there's and another little, little bitty one, one but these are super tiny. These may be like point zero zero five. Yeah. Like not even anything, but it is showing up um, still, on that station. Still movement, though, nonetheless, no matter how small, right? Yep. Guess we'll check the tram, see what the tremor map tells us later for sure. We'll see what it looks like. All right, folks, have a good day. Stay safe out there. It's kind of foggy out here in California, a little bit cold, at least cold to some people. <laughs> Missy Mimi's is bundled up here in a in a super warm blanket and <laughs> what's the temperature in here look read that temperature to the folks 70 degrees so it's 70 degrees <laughs> it's 70 here in my house says inside and out 70 is that well that's for the other room oh the other room yeah okay <laughs> so i have a couple of thermometers throughout the house here to measure each room temperature and uh she's in here with a super warm blanket just <laughs> freezing are you feeling okay yeah hands fine. are cold nose is a little cold cheeks are a little cold <laughs> 70 cold. degrees <laughs> freezing in here folks <laughs> he's making fun of me no he always, I'm not he always does it's okay though because most of the time I don't even normally use my I don't normally use my heater in the winter time unless it drops down into the See, 30s to me the air feels fine yeah. it's just me yeah it's all so. good though <laughs> all right have a good day guys we'll chat you guys a little bit later peace out stay safe out there guys peace out